Spring has sprung, the grass has riz. I wonder how to install my bumper app. Welcome to Team G503. I am your host, Scott Schiller, and in this video, we're gonna be covering the bumperette on the back of the G503 Jeep. That's your Willis MB or your Ford GPW. Interesting enough, an actual what an actual bumperette is, is its definition is a secondary bumper to protect the main bumper in the event of a collision. And in the case of the frame of the G503, there actually isn't a rear bumper. We call that a rear cross member. So these are put in place to kind of protect the back side in case of a collision. They are made of what is called spring steel. Now, spring steel can be a medium or a high carbon steel content steel. And the idea is, and they actually make springs out of them. That's why they're called spring steel. Um, the idea is, is to, it has high yield strength. So if that's hit, it's got a good chance of not getting crushed and returning to its original shape. The problem with that is when you get the new reproduction ones, these are, this is an original I'm holding in my hand. It's already been installed on my Jeep. But when you get them, you'll notice that they're you know, a little bit curved, a little bit offset, and that's okay. And I'm going to show you in this video how to install these. It's really quite simple once you just learn the simple tricks. Check it out. I think you'll like it. These are very high quality Joe's Motor Pool bumperettes carried by Ron Fitzpatrick Jeep parts. Notice the holes eye to eye are 5 and 11 16 inches. The MB part number for the bumperettes is A1157MB. Look at that F script right there on the back of this one. The part for the GPW number is A1157GPW. Let's take a look at the holes on an original rear cross member. I'll pull my tape here and you see it's the same measurement. It's 5 and 11 16 So the holes are correct. However, there's a curve in the back side of this bumperette. We'll measure here and you see it's the same measurement. It seems to be easy, right? But it's not. There's the curve. That's what makes it difficult. It's spring steel. It's got a little spring to it, so to say, or some tension, but we'll work that out when we install it. I've got some bolts here and they're not the correct size. The correct size should be 3 8 24 by 3 quarters, and I've got some that are an inch long and I've ground the markings, the modern markings off them, and they'll work into 3 8 holes. When I'm done installing them, I'll just simply cut the back side of the bolt off with a Dremel tool. Okay, here comes the trick. We're going to insert two bolts on one side of the bumperette and just put the bolts in for the time being. Each bolt comes with a lock washer and a nut. When you get those two bolts in, go ahead and put those two bolts on the outside. I found it seems to be easier to work from the outside of the rear cross member and then attach your fasteners, the lock washer first and then the nut. Only hand tight them for the time being. This will give you a little playroom when we make the final adjustments for the second two holes. And out comes my favorite tool, the hole alignment tool. As you see, it's tapered, just a tapered piece of steel. You can find these at any hardware store. And what it does is it aligns holes and two surfaces so you can insert bolts in them. I've also got a simple puncher or drift here. You could use that as well, but this hole alignment tool is going to make your life wonderful. Get yourself one. I'm going to insert the hole alignment tool through the bottom hole in the cross member into the bottom hole here on the bumperette. It seems to be easier to work the bottom hole. I can pull that in, out, up, down, and my goal is to get that top hole aligned. And you can even take a second punch and make sure that it is, but you can do it by eye. Just make sure that that's aligned and insert that top bolt. It'll go right in. Once again, my bumperettes have been installed previously so this is actually easier for me but that alignment tool will enable you to pull that spring steel bumperette in or out. I'm going to go ahead here on the top bolt and install the lock washer and the nut and again just hand tight them for the time being. I know my last bolt hole is in perfect order as per the alignment tool but if you had to you could use that alignment tool and pull back and you could push the bolt in. Mine's perfect so I'm just going to push this back up here and it slips right in. Again use that alignment tool to work those holes in and out. Go ahead and attach the lock washer and the nut. Going to use a 9 16 inch wrench and a 9 16 inch socket and driver and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to tighten up these bolts in a certain order. For some reason it works for me. Bottom top, bottom top, inside outside, keeps everything square. I'm not going to tighten everything tight first, just work it a little bit as we go. Yes, I'm using the socket on the back and my wrench to turn the front. I like that and I want to give you guys something to talk about. Watch what happens to that spring steel. See, right there. See how it flattened out as I pulled that bolt back in? I'm just going to tighten this until it's snug and then I'm going to go to that cross bottom one and tighten that till it's snug. Then notice how the top bolt there is getting loose. That's because I'm aligning everything with the bolts and I'm turning that spring steel and that bumperette 
perfectly straight how it should be on the back of the rear cross member. Moving again in an X, and I'm not tightening these fully just yet. We're not going to do that till we walk back behind the Jeep and we make sure the bumper heads are square. But notice how this is pulling in nice and tight. Look how loose that bolt is and how nice it lined up. There again, back across as in an X, top, bottom, bottom, top. Go ahead and tighten that last one up. Before you tighten these bolts fully, walk outside your Jeep, look from behind, make sure you're happy with how square your bumper head is, and then go back and tighten them fully. Hope this helped you out. That's how the bumper heads go in, and we love that spring steel. Look how nice that looks. And that's it. We got it installed. It's the same for both sides. Now, the tabs on a World War II Jeep would go up from all the pictures I've seen. I have seen some World War II pictures where the tabs are going down, but I'm not quite sure that's how they would have came out of the factory. The later M38s and the M38A1s, I've seen a bunch of those upside down. So in the comments, if you're going to comment, hey, the tab's the wrong way, I've done a lot of research on this, and indeed, in my opinion, the tabs do go up. If you'd like to subscribe and follow along, we're doing the 1943 Willis MB here on YouTube. You can do so by hitting that button down there on the bottom that says subscribe, and also click that little bell so the next time we release a video, you'll know that we did so. All right, my friends, and spring is here. Today, tonight, is the special. Uh, the special date uh, where spring actually starts. So that's why we did the spring steel video. <laughs> you just keep getting more and more corny, Schiller. Next time, my friends, keep it safe. Happy Jeeping.